Hi, I'm Axel Howerton. I'm uh, an author, editor, publisher. Um, I've been uh, doing this for seven years-ish. Um, before that, I was an entertainment journalist. I did uh, movie and DVD reviews, and music reviews, stuff like that. My first novel uh, came out in 2013 from a press in the States called Evolve Publishing. That's called Hot Sinatra. was a finalist for the Arthur Ellis Award for Best First Novel. Uh, since then, I had a, a book called Fur that came out last year, uh, kind of a noir meets urban fantasy. Um, that one uh, came from a press up here in Canada called Taiki Press. Um, they liked that so much, they wanted another one, which turned into an extended series. Next book in that series comes out in February. That's called uh, Demon Days. The series is called Wolf and Devil. The book's called Demon Days. Um and I had a book that just came out in November from Coffin Hop Press, um, which is called Con Morte. And uh, yeah. If you had to use one line you have written to describe the artist you started out as, what would that line be? There, there was a line from Fur. Uh, the other voices rise and cut through the ether, adding their strength to mine, holding me up, charging me full. They fill all of those empty spaces inside of me. They call with me. I'm not alone. For the first time, I'm not alone. I'm home. Near the end of a project, what is the emotion you find yourself more often feeling? And how long does it typically last? Like I'm sure most people would say exhaustion. Um, I have a hard time <laughs> separating myself from my work, so I get very obsessive. Um, and absorbed in it. I kind of have to separate myself and lock myself up for uh, as long as I'm working. I work in really long stretches. So, you know, I have a day job and the publishing stuff that I do for Coffin Hot Press. And um, so when I get a chance to write, it's usually, you know, Saturday, Sunday, and I'm just going from like three or four in the morning until three or four in the afternoon. Um, so when I finally finish a project and it's completely finished and it's off to the the publisher and I'm not even able to mess with it anymore. It's kind of um, just kind of feel spent and exhausted. And um, but at the same time, it, it's kind of renewing. It's like, you know, you're a bear coming out of hibernation and you know, <laughs> looking for a candy bar and, uh, you know, hug the kids. Dealing with critics, you've always found it better to what? Uh, hold my tongue. <laughs> um, it's it's a frustrating thing because many of the time I, I kind of feel like they might have missed something, they you know, or they glossed over something. And but at the same time, I don't really trust myself to to be calm and reserved enough to approach them because the times that I have kind of tried to start a dialogue with people, and this goes back to me being a an entertainment journalist. I was used to dealing with filmmakers and stuff and I would interview them when I was writing something about them or I'd get comments from people and you know as a journalist it's it's about a dialogue and trying to find a back and forth and I find with writing um, more so than with with filmmaking or anything that the critics tend to be more black and white and there's not really um, they don't really even consider debate or argument they just you know this is their opinion and that's all it is and and really, with a lot of them, I think any reply is, is perceived as an attack. So um, if you don't want people suggesting that you're attacking them or um, have people kind of tarnishing your reputation because you're arguing about these things or trying to tell them um, that their opinion's wrong, you kind of have to just back off and say, well, it is what it is. And everybody's entitled to their opinion. I just wish it was a little more open to let the creators kind of explain themselves a little better if there's um, issues that come up. You were a mad scientist and could actually bring one of your characters to life. Who would that be and why? It's kind of a, a half a bummer, but <laughs> um, there was a character in, in that first novel, Hot Sinatra, that was um, this kind of vibrant hilarious loud-mouthed obnoxious irish punk rock star named um foxy thunders and he's based 
he, he's based on one of my favorite people who was uh, a, a really good friend of mine uh, from when I was younger. Uh, his name was Ryan Fox, and he actually was a, a rockabilly uh, punk rocker. Uh, had a band called the Nightcrawlers. And uh, he was killed in a car accident. And I just, I missed that wild-eyed bastard so much, so much of the time that, you know, when I was writing that book, he just naturally came out and he became that, that character kind of became him. And I just really, you know, if there was one person I'd want to hang out with for many of my, my books and people say there's, you know, I love this character. I love that character. I wish I could hang out with this guy or that guy. Right. Um, but, but he's the one that I'd probably most want to have pop back into the real world as much trouble as he would probably be. Being the playing field where you never had to be concerned about money, time, resources. Give us one way in which you would be the same artist you are right now and in one way in which you would be vastly different. I'd like to think I'd still be as, as motivated to get things done as I am now. It's taken me a really long time to be able to, to focus you know, with all the other distractions in life. And I spent a really long time, I wasted a long time just kind of self doubting myself and um, kind of avoiding putting myself out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have a touch of the, of the ADHD. And now that I kind of have a handle on that and I can be more in control of things, I do get like a mind boggling amount of work done. But um, I would hope that even if I, I had, you know, all the resources of a, of a Stephen King and could, you know, do whatever I wanted, I'd still want to write. Mm. I've tried mm. to quit. It doesn't take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about it, right? Once you're in, you're in. It's, it's like yep. the mafia. You can't, it, there's no getting out. Exactly. <laughs> and then... And then on the other end, I guess, um, you know, if I had those kind of resources without having to worry about a day job and extra projects to, you know, pay the bills and feed the kids and that kind of thing, I, I, I'd like to think I would finally be able to be on top of everything. You know, it's so hard, especially um, as a writer now having to do, you know, you got to do your own promotion and everything, but you also have to do social media promotion. You got to try and do, um, you know, online promotion and print promotion and everything else on top of, you know, managing yourself and finding time to work on your projects and everything else. And it's, it's a, it's a hard road to travel. Um, especially I've talked to a lot of, you know, guys that were around writing stuff in the, in the eighties and the nineties and they, you know, they say flat out, I don't understand how you guys can even <laughs> manage these days because, you know, we'd, we'd just get an agent and, you know, put stuff out there and, you know, eventually you started getting paid for it. Well, like I say, Con Morte um, came out from Coffin Hot Press, which, yes, that's my press, but uh, I was kind of coerced into doing that. I was already working on that book and my partner, uh, Rob Bowes, he wanted to... Um, we were talking about starting a line of dark crime novellas. It came out really well. And I, I think it's one of the best things that I've written. And um, it works great as the, the kickoff for that line. And we've had uh, a bunch of great books that have come to us since then that are going to be in that line. Uh, there's a serial killer thriller from a guy named Jack Strange in the UK. Uh, that one came out in November. There's a uh, uh, one called Murdering Mr. Edwards and one called Rocket Rider and Little Putt Putt Go Down Swinging that come out in April. And that one in particular, it's just like balls to the wall, two-fisted pulp fiction awesomeness. Wow. Um, so it, it's going really well and I'm glad that I got to be part of the line. Um, the book itself, it's it's kind of a, a, like everything I do, it's kind of a weird mishmash of of things. It is noir um, because it is, it's really dark and uh, kind of nihilist. It's about a small time hitman with, uh, let's say, personality disorders mm. and uh, a disintegrating mental stability. And um, he starts to question everything about who he is and what he's been doing and, and the people that he's working for. Um, 
because he gets distracted by trying to desperately trying to save this one person who's the only person that he really has any kind of human connection with, which is the girl that makes his coffee every morning. <laughs> and his barista goes missing and, and you know, there's been some issues with the uh, abuse and stuff. So he goes looking for her and trying to save her. And in the, you know, in the literary sense, at the same time, trying to save himself. All kinds of great stuff. All that stuff you can find at coffinhop.com. Just coffinhop, no spaces, no dashes, dot com. Um, and you can find out all about everything else we have coming out. You can find me on um, online at uh, axelhow.com. That's A-X-E-L-H-O-W.com. Or uh, any of the social media stuff, just search Axel How A X E L H O W. Awesome. Well, Axel, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. It it's was been a, good, a pleasure. Good uh, little conversation. And um, uh, get, come talk to me when your book releases, and uh, we'll see what we can do together. Awesome. Thank you very uh, much. Have you run across some constructive feedback that has helped you in, in critiquing? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and every, every, I mean, there's those few reviews that are just, you know, some angry person just saying angry things and it's not really about you or your book. Um, but I think if you really, if you're, if you're being honest in your work and you're putting yourself into your work, it's going to come across as sincere and people can't help but kind of see that to some extent mm -hmm. and if they um you know if they have things to say about it then it's always worth listening and, and trying to you know mine the nuggets of of real truth and real gold out of anything that anybody says about it i mean if they took the time to read your work at least try and see things from their perspective so you can see how your work comes across to other people 